again, this is UML Operator. Okay, in this session, we're gonna be talking about Sparks EA Glossary. For this session, we're gonna stay in the Sparks default workspace layout. I've got browser on the left, properties in the upper right, and notes in the lower right. I've got the ribbon turned on, and as usual, I love the navigation bar. So how do you get to the glossary? So I'm on the Start tab right now. We're going to go to the Design tab, and over on the right, you see Dictionary, and you see Glossary, and some options you have, and Spelling. Right? I'm just going to focus on Glossary and Edit. I'll talk about Implement a Model-Based Glossary in another session. So we're going to select Glossary View, and it brings up our Glossary. Right? Now while I'm here, what I normally have, I'm just going to right-click up here in the bar, right? And I'm going to select Toggle Filter Bar. And that brings up these little magnifying glasses and the ability to look for, filter out specific things, like if I want to find C-Lock. Start typing. You can see I had everything with C in it. I had everything with CL, and I'm right at it. Right, and you can hit X to clear it, and you can go to other bars. Right, you can look by type, you can look by meaning, you can search for terms within the meaning. So, I usually have this on all the time. Let's look for the term TOGAF, the Open Group Architecture Framework. So, T O G, not finding it. I typed the whole thing, there is nothing here. So let's add the term. I'm going to right click in here, add new, right? I have lots of choices when this menu pops up from right clicking anywhere within the unit, or the page, the workspace. And I'm going to select new. <clears throat> and I usually, because I have a massive library, and I usually will bring in my definition. And that way I can simply copy and paste the acronym, the term, what have you. Now over in type, it may be blank for you. Um, it used to have defaults in there. I think it was architecture and business or technology and business. But you can see I've classified this as architecture. So this term is under architecture. I could certainly change it. Uh, TOGAF is actually, should be actually under frameworks. It's anything I want. If I click the triple dots here, I can add new glossary types for my project, or for my glossary in general. We'll go ahead and hit Cancel. And we can either apply right now. If I select Apply, we're going to write to the Spark SQL database, whether that's local SQLite instance or an external database. Right? So, and from here, I can select Delete to delete the item in case I accidentally hit Apply twice or I already have the term in there, or I don't want it in there anymore, or I could hit new. And if I hit new, it goes right to a clear dialog box where I can add another term, like domain-driven design, DDD, right? And this term I'm gonna put under uh, technologies or architecture. Let's just choose architecture. We can always come back and change it, and we're gonna put in the definition. So the, here's the definition of domain-driven design, or DDD, and it's showing up there. You, you can certainly put war and peace in here. You can get extremely verbose. I wouldn't do that. I would probably just put one paragraph, something like this, but I'll leave that up to you and the best practices your team wants to follow. So in this case, I'm just going to hit OK, right? And now I've added TOGAF. Let's type in T. There it is, T-O, and got to it. Double click on it, and I can open up the term, and I can manage the term here. And of course, if I need help at any point, select the Help button, and it, Sparks will provide you a help page for the glossary, right? So in this case, I'm just going to hit OK, right? Let's, lo let's look for our other term, which was D. And right when I hit D, it found everything with D in it. Here it is right here. I can hit it again. And I can filter in, double click, go in here, manage the term. Now, one of the key aspects of domain driven design, uh, key principles and concepts, is ubiquitous language. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And then, right from here, right click, add new, 
And we're going to bring in the definition of ubiquitous language, all right? Then I'm going to copy this, put the term in there, and I'm going to put it under, I'm going to leave it under architecture. I could create another type, but you also don't want to get carried away on types. So I've got six in here, five in here rather, and I think they're enough to cover it. But domain-driven design is maybe under the type domain, maybe under another type uh, of design, but or even driven design, because there, there's a lot of things that can fall under that classification. But primarily, uh, to me, it falls under architecture, right? And I'm going to hit OK, right? I'm going to hit X, and then what I'm going to do is hit U, B, there I am, ubiquitous language, and I can manage it from here. So here I have an e-commerce, I want to call it a block diagram. And in this case, I've got an element in here called e-commerce site, and it has some interesting nouns and verbs in it, right? So why is a glossary important? Why is a dictionary important? As ubiquitous language states, it promotes a shared language between stakeholders, whether they're domain experts and developers. And a domain expert could be a business analyst or one of your clients. So I'm just going to say between stakeholders. And so when I select this and we're reading together, we, under, we all agree on what content management. And because this is underlined, it means it's in the dictionary. And if I mouse over it and have these features turned on, it will highlight the items within our intelligence on what these terms and definitions are. CMS, so we can all agree that CMS stands for Content Management System. We have another one, Machine Learning. Mouse over it. it, it the dictionary pops up and you can see it says Control Click for full definition. So let's control click on an item that we're interested in. So control click, the dictionary pops up, the glossary pops up, and whatever you've defined for the term pops up. All right, so this is the power of Sparks Glossary and its use within your delivery. And you can have a glossary for specific deliveries like project delivery, you're just working through ideation and then your statement of work states that your deliverable is a solution artifact. And then project's over, you wait for acceptance and a path forward. Or it could be for the entire program, initiative, project, all right? So your dictionaries can be specifically for the things that you want to cover, or they can come in for the team as your entire glossary for your organization and the technologies and terms that you use. Now there's a couple of closing points that I want to make. Number one, if you go to the Start tab, you go to Preferences, we're going to launch a Preference dialog box. Talked about that in the beginning, this all in the one of the beginning videos of this channel. If we go to Objects, you can disable spelling Please don't do this. I'm a creative speller. Sometimes I get a little bit anxious when there's red underlines in my text, but I would always recommend that you keep spelling on. I'm gonna go ahead and close. We're gonna to go to design and we're gonna go over to dictionary spelling. So you can spell check your project. You can just spell check a specific package and then you have spelling options. So if I select spelling options. There's some things that I can select here to help manage how spelling is dealt with within Sparks Enterprise Architect. And I guess you can always hit help here and get any help and support you need. All right, let's go ahead and cancel, not making any modifications. Now you'll notice over here in notes, and I talked about this a moment ago, items that are in your glossary, they're underlined. Now I can mouse over them, I can get the defin definitions here. I can hit control click to go into the entry within the glossary database, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. I can also turn off these underlines, this highlighting, if you will. 
of these terms. So I simply right click in notes and you'll notice in the pop up menu, highlight glossary terms. It's checked on. If I select check off, I don't get the underlines for the terms or anything that is within the dictionary. Now, because the spelling CMS is unknown because it's not underlined here, so the red line replaces it. If I want to add an item, I just right click on it and I can add the dictionary. Now, note, I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now, CMS is not here. It's not adding it to this dictionary, right? The glossary view. So, and you can tell that it's not focused there because I do have CMS in my glossary. If I go here and I type in CMS, there it is right there, right? Definition, content management system. And I can put more words in there, but that's it, right? But I like to see them. I don't have any performance issues. So, because, you know, every time you load a page, it's going back to the database, it's running logic, but it happens so fast, I never see any issues. So I don't need to turn off things, features, for performance reasons in Sparks Enterprise Architect. And one of the most powerful things within Sparks is that everything here is in a database. So if it's in a database, I'm just going to go to the uh, Explore, Search, I'm going to select Model, and just bring up the search engine, if you will, for that database. And in this particular case, I'm just going to do something from scratch, and I'm going to write a SQL statement that's just going to do something like select everything from the glossary where the term is DDL. I could put anything in here. And later on, I'll show you how to use the SQL engine in Sparks. You could have it search this drop down box or this box right here for that term. But we're going to go ahead and run this. So I'm going to run it. And there it found DDL. All right. So we're going into SQL engine. What does that mean? Well, if the back end is the SQL database, this means that I can write code against that database to look for this particular table here and find my definitions so that I can expose them in another tool on a website, a wiki, those kind of places. So very, very powerful. I'll get more into this as we progress in this channel and we learn together. So I hope this video was helpful for you on glossary and the power of glossary. We'll talk more about it. You can select an item here, go here and hit edit. You can then filter here in this dialog box and manage your search, your terms. So you can display uh, anything that you want. Hey, we just want to look at everything with frameworks in it. You only have two items. So much you can do from the ribbon in the design tab. But once you bring up glossary, you can do all of that right here. All right. So you can modify the selected. It brings it up. I can double click on it. It brings it up. I can right click on here. I can rename a type. There's a lot of stuff that you can play around here on your own as you progress in Sparks Enterprise Architect, Sparks EA. And that's why I like using Sparks. I use a lot of different modeling tools. But Sparks gives me everything that I need to deliver anything I need to deliver. Thanks very much for watching. Talk to you all later. Happy modeling.